Greetings, friends across the Commonwealth. Steve Kissinger here. I am the program consultant for non-traditional instruction here at the Kentucky Department of Education within the Division of Innovative Learning. Today, we're going to be looking at the 2024 overview for the non-traditional instruction program and hopefully provide you all with some information and tips to help you get through not just this year, but future years of non-traditional instruction, continuation of learning uh, processes with as little difficulty as you can. When it comes to 2024, the non-traditional instruction overview, a lot of you have been used to processes that have been in place for a while. One of the newest things that changes is the application process. This is now all part of your continuation of learning plan within your CDIP. Uh, you will do the comprehensive district improvement plan process. This allows you to apply for the upcoming school year. We have changed the wording on that, so it will say non-traditional instruction plan and it should say implemented in the future year. When you do apply and are accepted, you are granted 10 and only 10 non-traditional instruction days maximum for safety and health reasons alone. This plan, when you fill it out, will be part of the phase four part of CDIP. That window opens January 1st through May 1st. You may edit it before January 1st, but the official window is January 1 to May 1. You go do that through eProof. Link is here on the PowerPoint. And it should be named this year, 2023-2024, Phase 4, Non-Traditional Instruction, Continuation of Learning Plan for Districts, Implemented 2024-2025. You're always applying for the year coming up, not the current one. Just a note for former plans or plans that are currently being implemented, you are able to go in and edit those at any time. Diagnostic will be reviewed by the Kentucky Department of Education, and after recommended changes, if you need to do so, you will become part of your district's approved CDIP. When it comes to approving that as a whole, most districts do include this whenever your CDIP plan is approved by your Board of Education, if that's how your district does it, that will also apply to your non-traditional instruction plan, which is part of the CDIP. You don't have to go through a separate acceptance if your district doesn't do that. Data and artifact collection when you use an NTI day. Your data standards for non-traditional instruction can be found. Link is here in the PowerPoint and on the Kentucky Department of Education website. When you log into Infinite Campus, whoever at your district controls that, obviously you will have to insert the school year that you're using the date, the date of non-traditional instruction usage, your reason for the usage, whether it's health or safety, and then eventually you'll have to add your student participation rates and your teacher participation rates. You must document NTI days on your district school's calendar. Additionally to data and artifact collection, when NTI is utilized, guidelines for artifact collection have been changed slightly. Obviously, as always, we will need the teacher assignment. What has been assigned on that non-traditional instruction day? This can be a prompt. This can be a worksheet. This can be a story. As long as we see what assignment is assigned, we can accept that. The change comes with this. Whatever is assigned, we need to see the corresponding completed student work of that. And that will apply kindergarten through 12th grade. So if you're chosen for end of year monitoring, you will have to provide a teacher assignment and corresponding completed student work for each grade level. And that could be any core content, electives, any, uh, anything that your school or your district provides, and that could be across the entire district. It must be accessible for KDE if selected for end of year monitoring. We cannot accept web links and Google links and things of that nature as those expire. And here at KDE, we do not have access to your district's plans in the first place. We advise that districts keep materials on for a minimum of two years in case of auditing or open records request from outside sources. Allowable items do include screen captures, screenshots, copied documents, cell phone pictures, PDF files, Word files of teacher lesson plans, assignments, student choice boards, 
in anything similar to this. Again, this is not a comp comprehensive complete list. There are other assignments. Student work samples aligning and correlating with assignment on utilized NTI day must be part of this process, hence they are allowable. Not allowable items. Remember, student names, faces, personal details, and any identifying information must be redacted before submission to KDE for monitoring. Grade books, roster completion sheets, summary grade pages, and parental initial pages where parents sign off that the work was completed are not allowable for a student work to be turned in as when the redaction process takes place, there's little to no information left on those documents. Web links are also non-allowable as these expire in most cases or cannot be opened outside of the district that they have been submitted from. KDE usually does not have access and if we have to have these readily available, we cannot accept web links in this feature. Examples here while ensuring alignment, we have allowable items over here where we have just screenshots from the website. We have pictures that students have taken of completed projects. We also have screenshots of a screen. If the screen button, the screen capture print screen button does not work, we have copies that have been scanned. And we also have pictures that have been taken from a cell phone of actual notebooks that works. These are all allowable as they showcase. Do note the student in the middle whose face has been redacted as that is something that must be taken care of. Non allowable items references back to the student completion sheets, the grade book completion sheets. As you can see, once everything has been redacted, we really don't have a lot of information to go on and it doesn't show student work in the slide. Show something was completed. We just have no clue what and therefore cannot link it up with the teacher assignment. Many districts have evolved and started using educational learning platforms and collecting digital work can be a different journey. Uh, the best way to try to figure this out is to access your learning platform. Log in, familiarize yourself where assignments are hosted. Many teachers across the Commonwealth are creating amazing assignments for non-traditional instruction days. And most platforms do include assignment printing and saving either single assignments or bulk assignments so you can have those. Utilize tutorial resources. Most learning platforms have their own instructional videos on how to download, find these assignments, print out what you need, save what you need, screenshot what you need. If that doesn't work, there's other websites such as YouTube and other instructional websites that have a plethora of ways to learn, download, print, and save assignments that have been created by teachers who had this very problem and have uploaded videos on how to find and utilize the platform's uh, bulk and single saving printing options. If all of that fails, contact your uh, learning platform support. Proactively reach out to the platform support or have your district IT help desk uh, reach out and find the answers that your educators need across your districts for their additional assistance. Most of them will be happy to help. When it comes to establishing an effective internal process for collecting and monitoring non-traditional instruction work, most districts have multiple schools and it's crucial for the district to get all of the schools on the same page for not just their own sake, but for compliance, open records, and audit purposes. Many districts thus far utilizing non-traditional instruction have set up folders by teacher copy machines and break rooms, so teachers can just walk in when they're printing out an assignment, they can drop one in the folder, and therefore the district has a copy of that. There's a lot of districts that have district-maintained file hosting services, such as Dropbox, OneDrive, Sync, Mega, Google Drive, iCloud, and other ones. Email submission protocols when NTI days are utilized. If a teacher assigns something, they print copies and download things and email it into an NTI uh, district website or email so that they have those on file so that whoever at the district maintains NTI collection can go in and just answer the emails and download what they need. Planning days also have been dedicated to gathering and pairing NTI artifacts. As we know, educators across the Commonwealth are stretched pretty thin. The best way to help allocate this need is to give them the time so that they can prepare and get everything ready for the district. 
a basic process the district could utilize is the six step process. Number one, designate a secure and centralized storage repository, cloud based or a dedicated server in your district. Usually most IT uh, district IT personnel will know how to set this up. Number two, designate personnel at each school to oversee local collection and submission of work. If you delegate this task out and each school is preparing and then it works its way up the chain of command, you'll have a centralized uh, storage put together pretty easily. Number three, develop and communicate clear submission guidelines using the Kentucky Department of Education non-traditional instruction guidance and data standards. Those links are throughout this document and at the end. Number four, implement a strategic system for scattered sampling. Remember, if you are selected for end of year monitoring, we will not be collecting everything. We will just be asking for K through 12 for each day utilized. So 13 documents uh, hitting both the teacher assignment and the student completed work item will be turned into us. And again, that can be comprised of core content and electives. Some districts do submit multiple ones. They'll do low, medium, or high, or random content at each grade level. Examples, English one for ninth grade, US history for 11th grade, science for 12th grade so that they scatter around. All that matters is it's aligned paired teacher assignment with completed student work. Number five, establish a retention policy. The Kentucky Department of Education advises a two to three year cycle. You wanna keep most non-traditional instruction materials on hand for two years. In that third year cycle, you could start uh, removing and destroying the oldest of the artifacts that you have on hand. This is due in case some open re records request is brought to your district or there is some type of auditing that needs to take place. Number six, conduct training sessions and professional development surrounding proactively learning the used digital learning platforms and how to collect samples across the district. Many districts are doing this because it not just benefits non-traditional instruction uh, artifact collection, but when they have presentation of learning throughout the year, having student artifacts on hand can be a major boom for being able to have those ready to go and for any visitors who want to come in and see what the district has been doing throughout the school year. End of year monitoring for non-traditional instruction has evolved a little bit over the past few years. For the 2023-2024 school year and beyond, a sampling of districts will be selected for end of year monitoring. We are currently in creating a five-year rotation for non-traditional instruction, but due to the nature of the beast of NTI usage across the Commonwealth, some districts may be picked back-to-back -back years or every other year, depending. Districts will be given access to a Kentucky Department of Education NTI SharePoint for file uploading if they are selected. You can see a picture of that over on the right, where you will have 13 folders for each day that your district utilizes NTI for health and safety and you have to populate it with artifacts of the teacher assignments and corresponding student uh, completed work with those assignments. For each NTA, NTI day utilized, selected districts will upload teacher assignments and paired completed student work from various core content and electives for each grade. That's K through 12, as you see to the right. Your teacher participation numbers will be entered into Infinite Campus. Your student participation numbers will also be entered into Infinite Campus. And then we will also send out an end of year monitoring questions, which will just ask you about the processes you followed throughout the school year and what you may do at the end of the year to change your plan going into the next school year for a better non-traditional instruction experience, not just for your teachers, the students, and all of your shareholders across the district. This is all similar to any cyclical attendance audits that go forth. After everything has been submitted, the commissioner will approve NTI days if everything has been completely entered in Infinite Campus and if you're part of the end of year monitoring that has been completed. This is here. Documentation in Infinite Campus must be completed by April 1st. You can utilize your NTI data standards for each day. That will tell you exactly what to do. The commissioner's approval usually will occur by the end of May. Any follow-up submissions will occur prior to the end of the school year by June 30th if there's any complications or further data needed. In conclusion for 2024, the non-traditional instruction participation review, we've went over the application process within your CDIP. 
We've redefined allowable and non-allowable items. How to attain digital and online work throughout your district. How to establish an internal process across the Commonwealth. What will happen if you are selected for end of year non-traditional instruction monitoring. And how the commissioner goes about approving your NTI days. Additional resources dealing with non-traditional instruction can be found here on the slide. The slide will be provided or the PowerPoint will be provided on the KDE NTI website. We do have the non-traditional instruction guidance always available. The non-traditional instruction data standards, which apply to infinite campus and collection of data. We've also included copies of the statutes and regulations, which deal with non-traditional instruction. And if you have any further questions, contact myself, Steve Kissinger. My email is available there. I will answer any questions and find out answers to anything that you have moving forward. With all that said, I hope you all have enjoyed this overview of the 2024 non-traditional instruction program. Again, I am Steve Kissinger. If you have any questions or comments, please email or call me. Uh, with the links provided in the PowerPoint and on the Kentucky Department of Education NTI website. I'll do the best of my ability to try to find you an answer as always. And if not, I'll direct you to the person who can find you that answer. With that said, have a great day. And if you have anything, you know where to find me.